We're in the autism lab and we are studying currently how individuals with traits of autism and social anxiety look at social scenes like videos of people interacting with each other and seeing where their eyes go as they watch those scenes and then also seeing what they remember from those scenes by asking them questions about what emotion was shown, um, what color is the table, stuff like that. What's interesting about this research is we're looking at something called the broad autism phenotype. So instead of looking at a clinical population of people who have been diagnosed with autism, we're looking at a broader spectrum of traits. So the way I think about it is if you have a trait that makes it like you have more uncomfortability looking at people in the eye when you have a conversation with them, even though just having that trait alone might not be enough to get you clinically diagnosed with autism, it still will impact how you interact with people in your everyday life. We have some really sophisticated equipment here to look at brain activity, eye tracking, um, which are really key to understanding emotional processing, which is one of the things that we're studying and the project that Min is working on. So Minna was talking about doing the um, studying people who are on the broader autism phenotype. Um, and so we have access to student populations here of students who vary all along the spectrum. So we're able to recruit students here, uh, measure their brain activity and reaction time while they're looking at videos and pictures um, and kind of quantify the differences that are there as a function of their autistic traits. So one of the things that we also are looking at is social anxiety as well. So in the relationship between social anxiety and autistic behaviors. And so um, there what we see is that individuals with autistic behaviors tend to be more socially anxious. And so we thought, well, they're gonna have similar processing different similar processing abilities across a range of different tasks but what we found is that some tasks you'll find those with high autistic behaviors have more difficulty with or do better in and then in other whereas those high or low in social anxiety have no differences and we find the opposite pattern for other types of tasks so even though these two things are highly related we can begin to maybe understand how they differentially contribute um, based on looking across a variety of tasks we're not doing EEG anymore because since videos are longer, we're less concerned about the time aspect of when the brain is lighting up and more interested in where eyes are going, which is why we're doing an eye tracking study for videos instead of doing um, an EEG study for videos. Uh, we have not done data analysis yet, so I can't tell you exactly what the results are, but I'm just really interested in seeing how much time people spend on items in a video, what they look at first, and how that impacts their memory.